as I was introduced, I am the head of station for Cool FM, Nigeria Info, Wazobia FM, and Wazobia Max TV here in Abuja. Um, and what I'm here to do is to give you a masterclass on presentation and diction. I'm here because I'm passionate about that. So the objective, like I said, of this uh, masterclass is just pretty much to give you a general overview of what presentation is. So by the end of it, I'm hoping that you'll understand what presentation is, what it is to present, and also a few tips on how to make your presentation effective, any kind of presentation, whether it's radio, whether it's TV, whether it's sales, whether it's um, campaigning, whether it's a pet project, anything where you have to speak in front of an audience, a few tips that would help you. What is a presentation? Any ideas? All the Wikipedias. <laughs> yeah, who's going to help us? What's a presentation? What comes to your mind when you think of the word presenter? Yes, please. Um, a presentation is a speech that has a motive or a goal or a subject and ten, tends to or intends to educate people. Brilliant. Brilliant. Excellent. Anybody else? Yes. Uh, presentation is a speech Speak a little bit louder. Presentation is a speech that targets the um, audience or a large group of people. Good. Good. Very good. Yes. One more. The presentation is a speech that educates people about a particular topic. Right, I like that. So you all um, have an idea of what we're looking at. So um, I'll just put it by saying, it's the process of presenting a topic to an audience, like you said. Um, it could be a demonstration, it could be an explanation, it could be a lecture. But the underlining thing is that there are three things that you're trying to do when you're presenting. You're either trying to inform, persuade, or to build a sense of goodwill. Okay? And sometimes you can be doing all three. All right? So... I like to keep it simple. You're, you're giving a talk, you're explaining something, like what I'm doing now. And that way, it's easier, right? Okay, so there are different types. Like I said earlier, it could be a sales presentation, it could be a lecture, it could be a radio, TV presentation, it could be a campaign, it could be a business presentation, it could be anything. It's just about a topic, speaking, explaining to an audience. So we're going to go through a few tips that help to make your presentation more effective. The first thing I always say would to be to have knowledge on your topic or the subject matter. You've got to be informed. You've got to know what it is you're talking about, right? I mean, how? I mean, it doesn't make sense if you want to talk about something and you don't know the facts, right? So the first thing you want to do is to gain information, have knowledge about what you want to talk about. It's so important. I can't overemphasize it because there's nothing else you're doing. If you, I mean, don't come up and stand here and waste people's time if you don't know what you're talking about. So convince yourself first before you can convince others, right? So the important thing is to know what you're talking So do your homework. It's not enough to have a pretty face, right? You've got to do your homework, research, read, expose yourself. Listen to things, hear other people, mix around with people who are smarter than you, learn from others, do a survey. Whatever you need to do to gain information on what it is you want to talk about, you must do. So you have to have knowledge on what you want to do. And then when you've done your research, you've done your homework, then script it. What did I say? Script it. Why do we need to script? Anybody? So, sorry? Uh, one at a time, yeah? So you don't forget, yeah? Okay, anybody else? Okay, so yeah, so you don't forget. But also, you know, I find when I script, it gives a structure to what I'm doing. It's like, yeah, I read it all, it's there. But then when you actually take the time to pen it down, it gives structure to what you're trying to present. Right? Okay. And then after that, the next thing you need to do is to what? Practice. You need to do what? Practice. You need to do what? Practice. Yes. I want to emphasize the word practice. 
You can't have enough of practice. You have to practice. Even what you're doing here is practicing for the big day. And when I mean practice, don't just um, practice in your head. Okay, you've done your reading. Okay, you've written it down. No, take out time. You could even stand in front of a mirror. Practice the words you want to say. Practice your script. Practice how you're going to deliver it. Practice with a friend. Practice until it becomes a part of you. Till you become one with your presentation. And then it flows from within you. So that when you're standing and saying whatever it is you're saying, people can actually match it. That it's not the presentation is here and you're here and you're trying to connect. You know what I mean? It's coming from you. You're one in sync with what you're saying. And then it becomes believable. It becomes what? Believable. It becomes believable. All right? Aha, my favorite. Okay, the next tip is um, overcoming nervousness. Yeah, a lot of people go through that. Not just a lot, everybody. What did I say? Everybody. You see, it's, the important thing is to know that, you know, everyone gets nervous. It's not pe pe peculiar to just you or you or you. Everyone gets nervous, all right? So don't think it's an abnormal thing. It's just energy that needs to be transformed, all right? When you get nervous, you know what it means? What happens to you? Give me an example, like when you get nervous. Your body, uh -huh, your body shakes, right? What else? You stutter. Okay, but I'm, I want train of thoughts. Okay, okay, right. So, so a lot you flutter, your tummy butterflies. It's like so much is going on. Yeah, some people. In fact, some people begin to like. You know, exactly. But do you know what that is? That is energy. It shows that look, there's energy there. It's just that it's not being processed the right way. So when you are aware that. This is actually a good thing. It shows that I have energy. I'm passionate about it. I'm excited about this. But I need to just process it, transform it in a way that it can be productive and helpful to me. All right? Lots of people have different ways. I'll give you an example. For instance, um, you know how you have a river? And then, you know, it's like putting a dam to hold it back, right? Everybody knows what a dam is, right? So it holds back the water that's flowing through, right? And that dam is there to do that. Now, if you go a little further, that same water, and you decide to like transform it through a, a generator, like generating, what does it do? It becomes electricity. So you see, that's actually water that's going through a process, and then it becomes electricity. You know that's how we get electricity. So what am I trying to say that there's energy. You have it when you're nervous, but just find the right way to process it, and you'll find out you can use it to your advantage. Different people have different ways. I mean, some people even decide that, okay, they, they need, before they go for a performance or a presentation, they need to scream, they need to shout, they need to like, really like, oh, yeah, yeah, you know, just let it out, all that, because it's coming out, because if you keep it that way, probably, it'll come out in a negative way. So you need to find your own rhythm, find what works for you. Other people might just decide that for them, what works is just sitting quietly, you know, just meditating, just internalizing, and just having time to like reflect. And they're channeling that energy in a way that when they do come to stand or present, it flows and obeys them in the way they want to. So you need to find what works for you. Different things for different people. Am I making sense? Yes. Okay. So dealing with nervousness, one of the things you can do is to make sure that you know your script, right? At least you know what it is that you want to say. Half the problem is gone, right? So know your script. And by knowing your script, I don't mean to cram it or memorize it. Um, let me give you a pen. I actually brought pens for you all, so you can share it around, yeah, if you don't have a pen, for those that don't have. Okay, so when I say know your script, it doesn't mean to cram it, it doesn't mean to like memorize it, but it means to, are you raising your hands, you want to say something on the pen? Okay, let me wait for the pens to go around. 
For those that don't have first, then we can be generous to give all the others. We have some ladies at the back that don't have. Thank you, You're welcome. It's courtesy Cool FM. You're welcome. So do we all have pens now? We good? All right. Okay, so you want to know what it is you're talking about. Know your script, right? And um, it's not memorizing. It's not cramming. It's just letting it be in sync with you. Can we have one house, please? I'd appreciate the respect. Thank you. So it's having your script and understanding what it is you want to say. Half of your nervousness is knocked out. The next thing you want to do is practice your script, okay? These are things you need to do when you want to deal with your nervousness, okay? And many of you will have situations like that in the coming days. So practice what it is you want to say. Even if it's a small little speech, even if it's just a 10 second thing, practice it, practice it, practice it. Stand in your room, practice it, practice it. The more you're doing that, you know, it's becoming a part of you. It's becoming a part of you. So practice, practice. That's what we say to our OAPs. Before you go on air, practice it. They don't just come and you hear them, oh, 96 point. No, 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 no. They practiced and practiced and practiced. And they have a script there, you know? When you go to a theater to watch a performance, it's not just miraculous, oh, these guys are brilliant. No, no. What went behind it? They practiced, right? They knew their script. They practiced and practiced and practiced until they reached perfection. To the point that when they came to present it, you were wowed and you clapped and you enjoyed it. Not so? Same thing applies to you. Practice, practice, practice. Next thing I always like to do is to visualize yourself. See yourself on that stage. Shut your eyes for a bit wherever you are and say, oh, I begin to see, okay, yeah, I'm standing, I miss Nigeria, I'm talking to the audience, and this is how I'm standing, this is the way I'm moving. And you know, just you see yourself. Put yourself in that place. Begin to visualize yourself. You're dealing, you know what you're doing? You're removing layers of nervousness. You're stripping away nervousness. So you're tackling the nervousness. You're dealing with it. Instead of it just being there, you're like, oh my God, I'm so excited. No, 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 that's not helping. There are actual things that you can do to deal with it, okay? How many people have ever tried visualizing themselves? Yeah? It works, right? It does. Do it. The next thing that we did this earlier is deep breathing exercises. Okay? When, you, when you're taking deep breaths, you know what happens? The oxygen goes into your head. The blood begins to work better and in a way it brings out a, a feeling of relaxation, a feeling of calmness. And you find yourself more relaxed. So you want to try and breathe. Okay, can we try that quickly? Breathe in, breathe out. Okay, we have another section where we'll talk about how to do that. Then you want to try speech and voice exercises. Who has an idea what that is? Yes, please, don't be afraid, yes. Um, running up and down the flight of stairs, and when you come back, I'm trying to make sure that your voice is the same. Okay, did, did you hear her? No. Okay, you need to speak louder. Sweet. Running up and down a flight of stairs. Okay. And when you get back to the top, you try to ensure that your voice is the same. Okay. Voice. Okay. That's, 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 yeah. Yes. To get your voice very audible. Like sometimes you have to, like, move, like, this part of your body. You have to, like, oh, like, okay. Right. Absolutely. And, yeah. Good, good. Exactly. I love it. I love what she's doing. And you see, there's no shame in this, really. It's not about how you're... Because you do this before the stage. These are things you do before you come on air, on stage. You practice. So let's do some now. So open your mouth and... Ah! Ah! Ooh, ooh, ooh! Ooh, ooh! Oh, ah! Ah! You know what this does? You're stretching your mouth. In fact, we even do tongue twisters. You know tongue twisters? Yeah. Okay, who knows a tongue twister? Uh -huh. 
You know what it does? It's loosening your mouth. It's making it flexible. That's what you do before you go on air. So your mouth is free. You're stripping off nervousness. You know? Just like when you shake yourself, you're letting go of, you know, everything is really energy. So it's not like you're being silly. You're actually doing stuff. So before I need to talk, before I go on air, before I do this, I just do all these things. Standing from the you losing your mouth. La 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 la. You find singers. They 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 practice the same way if you're speaking. So your 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 mouth is flexible. They can obey you when you want to do talk fast. It goes this way. You want to say something. You know, it obeys you because you're in charge. You've practiced. Okay, so let's try a little bit. Okay, and you know what? Smiling, I'm sure I wrote, yeah, smiling works. It's, uh, it makes you look beautiful, it relaxes your, your muscles, and uh, it opens the door. Smiling works all the time. So let me see you smile. There you go. It does wonders. So try and do it more often. Without saying anything, you just smile, you win someone's heart, okay? All right. So yeah, breathing exercises. I just want to, so a lot of people breathe the wrong way. Um, there's a balloon here. You know how a balloon, the proper way to breathe is actually you have a balloon and then you begin to blow it. You know what happens? It's, it's going bigger, you know, because the air is expanding it. Now, when you take in breaths, deep breaths, air is filling your diaphragm, your stomach and the whole of you. That's the right way. So it's like it's expanding. You find your stomach going bigger. Everywhere is getting bigger. That's the right way to breathe. And then you let it out and everything contracts. Okay? So that's the proper. Some people are breathing. <gasps> no, no, no. You're just dying. A lot of times we're breathing and we're breathing the wrong way. And we're killing ourselves slowly. But when you actually breathe, you know, babies breathe the right way. But somehow when we grow up, we all kind of like lose it. But when you breathe the right way, you actually find out that you're more relaxed. You're, you're calmer, you know, because things are working the right way. So let's try breathing one more time. In. Out. In. Out. And always come out with your nose, you know, where, I mean, with your mouth. When you breathe in, you know, the hair in your nose, you know what it does? It's actually filtering. That's why we don't breathe in with our, our mouth. It's our nose. It filters the air, so it's clean enough for us. But then we bring out through our mouth. So let's do it again. Out. In. And think of nice things. Out. Shut your eyes, in, out, in, out. I could fall asleep now. All right, okay. All right, so we've done some tongue twisters. We've done the mouth exercises, yeah? Okay, and um, we have an idea of that. Okay, the next thing. Poise and body language. You know, we communicate so many ways, not just by speaking, but a lot of times we're saying things without even saying things, right? So, um, and most times it's what you're not saying that is actually heard, <laughs> if you understand what I mean, more than what you're saying. Okay, so let me have... Um, Three volunteers. One, two, three. Okay, three of you come out. All right, so now I want you to have your head down, slump shoulders, and say, I'm very confident. Okay, that's what you're going to do. You are going to say, no, just three. Okay, knocked, let, you're going to have your, your legs knocked and your arms folded, and then I'll, I want you to say, I feel great. All right? 
And then you will back the audience like you are doing, and you'll say, I have tremendous respect for you. Okay, so one by one, let's start with the first person. So let's give her the stage. Yeah. I am very confident today. Do you believe her? No. Absolutely. So please stand to that side. Thank you. We don't believe you. Okay, next. I feel great. Do you believe her? No. Stand there. Thank you very much. I have tremendous respect for you. Does she? Oh. How? Thank you very much. Thank you, ladies. Very lovely. Now, you see what I'm trying to say is that, you know, they're saying something, right? But their bodies are saying other things, right? And that's how it is. So you must be in sync with your body. So that you do some of these things, you find out you're working and you're in sync with what you're saying is the same thing that your body is saying. I feel great today. I feel great today, right? Uh, what was the other one? I'm confident. Is that believable? No. I'm confident. I'm really confident. I believe in myself. I have things I want to tell you. I recognize that if I say something, you listen, you believe. Is there a difference? Yes. Right. So you see, my poise, my shoulders, confidently. All right? I'm sure you all know how to stand, right? They've taught you that, right? Okay, come. Okay, for instance, let's pretend like you're going to present, present the news or anything, okay? Just stand for me. All right? Yes, I like that, okay? But I would say one leg out, okay? And you see, shoulders up, tummy in, head up. You see the difference? Doesn't she look beautiful? See? Now put your shoulders down. And keep your head up too. You see, it's not as effective. Now do the, do the other one we did. Shoulders up, head up, tummy in, butt out. Yeah. There's a difference. And you see, it comes with practice. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. It comes with practice. So your poise, the way you're standing, you carry yourself gracefully. And people want to listen. People want to watch. You have their attention. My body is saying, I'm in control. I know what I'm saying. You should try and be like me. Not so? OK, that's the way. Same thing if you're sitting. I love the way you're sitting. But some people are not sitting properly. If you're presenting, Maybe you're sitting down somewhere, whether it's in front of a TV or not. I mean, it's always important. You sit, your butt, your, even standing, I didn't tell you this. You know, when I said your leg, professionally, if you're, I mean, you always have one leg forward. The guys can do like this. But for ladies, usually one leg forward. And you know what it does? Your hip, you're resting here, you see? So the emphasis is on your hip. Okay, and then the shoulder up, head up, if you're comfortable this way. So the emphasis is here. See what I'm doing? And my butt is out, my stomach is in, my head up, and I rule the world. 